So welcome to your Smart Valve app training session. So on this video, we're going to go through some of the basic um, functions of Smart Valve and just show you how to get going uh, in terms of using the app and starting the trial off. If as we go through the next few weeks, you want to get involved in some more of the detailed functions of Smart Valve, then we can go over that in either an online Q&A session or I can do some further training videos for you uh, and provide you with the links so we can go in some of the more detail. But this first session, this is going to be about a 25, 30 minute video, which you can dip in and out of at any time, just to remind you. We're just going to go over those basic functions and just explain what Smart Valve is about. So when we get going with Smart Valve, as a trial user, you will get sent an email from Smart Valve asking you to set your password to access the application. So once you've done this, um, your username will be your Southeast Water email address and the password will be the one that you set when you get that email. Now it's important when you get that email that you set that password within the next 24 hours or the link will expire and you'll need your password uh, reset to be sent again. But once you've done it, that's it. We don't hold your passwords. We don't know what your passwords are. They're all encrypted in the database. So, you know, you can use any password that you're familiar with and use that to log into the app. So the app is downloaded from either Google Play or from the App Store on Apple, depending on which device you're accessing it. It's freely available on there, but do please remember that this is a live application. So as things progress during the next few months, there will be updates to the app. So if there are updates, then please download those updates and make sure you're using the latest version of the app all the way through the trial. So once you've got the application, you've clicked on it, this will open up and this is your homepage to go into. So all we're going to be concerned about today is just looking at logging in. So I'm going to type in my username. So my username for this trial is Andrew. And then to allow me to access different trial versions, I have some special login privileges. So you are Southeast Water, Australia. And then I add plus, sorry, even at smartvalve.co. Okay, okay, so that will be your Southeast Water email address in there for you, and then I log in using my password. And press the login button. So now we're logging into the application. So Smart Valve isn't always on application, so it uses the mobile data network to go and interrogate our cloud databases. And we have a Smart Valve web application as well, where all the data for Southeast Water is held. So all of your valves, your DMA setup, all of the users, and all the jobs that may be sent from the web application to you as well. So if you do have any jobs on here, then this blue rectangle down the bottom will tell you the jobs that you've got to do. So for the purposes of this part of the training, we're going to look at kind of two key areas. So one is how you actually find a valve on the system, then have a look at the detail that sits behind those valves. And then we're going to go and have a look at how you might edit that detail if it's incorrect once you're out in the field. And then finally setting up a job uh, and actually undertaking that job in terms of operating the valve, either an open or a close. So we'll just keep it really simple for this training session. There are more detailed things that we can do as well. But again, as I said, if we need to come back and do a Q&A session or do some further training videos, we do that as well. So just looking around this homepage now, so we have behind a map. So that map will always center on your current location based on the phone's GPS signal. So everything is GPS located. So all your valves are GPS located based on the signal on the phone. So wherever you are, that will appear as a blue dot. So you can see my location now is a blue dot and that's located on where I am sat doing this video. Then at the top, we have our main search bar. So we use that for searching for valves, as it said. On the left-hand side, the three uh, lines there are your navigation. So if you click that, that opens a navigation on the left-hand side. To get out of that, we can just swipe back right again, and that will break us back to the home page. Then we have another little three navigation dots over there. So again, for the purposes of this trial, we're not going to actually look at those because these are some more advanced functions that some of our other users have had. 
But the one that you might be interested in is the two circular arrows there, which is a refresh button. So if you hit refresh, that will go up and it will go to the cloud and say, are there any jobs for this person? If there are, are there any changes to the valves or the setup, bring those down to the application. The other two we're not going to be interested in right now. So we have a communications instant messaging system in here, which is a speech bubble. And we also have the ability to tag valves using NFC chips. But again, for this trial, um, we're not actually looking at that. Again, if that's something that we want to do later down the line and, and go into that in a bit more detail, we can explore that. So get rid of that nav just by pressing the cross button there. So let me go into this navigation and just talk through some of the points that they have on this left hand side. So we have the search bar there as well in that main nav, so we can always search for a valve. Back to home obviously takes you back to home and that will do a refresh. Underneath that we have our operations log. So I'm brand new into this system now, so I have no operations, but it breaks it down into operations that you're there to complete and ones that you've recently completed. Now the way Smart Valve works in terms of the one that you've recently completed is it looks at the jobs you've done in the past few days and they will be in there so you can go and have a look at what you've been doing. Now all this information is all available online as well so what you see in the app is just here to help you in your day-to-day -day activities. But if you have um, some jobs there that are waiting to be done they'll appear in this incomplete on the left hand side. So if I had a job on Valve say ending in 1000 for example then if I'd operated that valve in the past that would come into my recently completed jobs as well so that's useful because you know you're gonna that smart valve knows you're gonna go and operate that valve it knows you've operated in the past so it'll pull it back into your recently completed jobs so you can have a look at what you did on that valve last time go back have a look at the valve any notes that you've made and made etc so that's your operations log you can add a valve within Smart Valve, so there is the ability that if you can't find a valve out in the field that you can add a valve. And that's obviously useful if you're doing things like what we call developer services here in the UK. So if there are new connections going in and you want to add a valve, then that can be done from this point. You know, we also have the ability to use more complex and accurate GPS systems like a Catalyst Trimble that allows you to mark you know, the location of new valves that are going in as well and add the valve at the time. But again, these are more advanced features that some of our other uh, installed client bases are using. So we're not going to look at adding the valve at the moment. All your valves should be there from the import that we've taken from your GIS system. We also have then an idea about what's new. So these are all the version numbers of smart valves. So as you can see, the current version number is 2.3.11. Um, and it tells us what we've done in terms of updating it. So every time there's an update, we'll increment this at the top um, and it will say what we've done. So you can see all the different increments over the last few weeks and months, things that we've added um, you know, and smart valve, like I say, is a living product and there's lots of development going on all the time. Uh, help and feedback, so please use this. Um, this is an area where you're going to find some more information about Smart Valve and can obviously report back to us if anything's not quite working as it should be. So we have some guides, so you can download your quick start guide here. So this will show you a, a guide for both uh, the Apple version and the Android version. I'd heartily recommend going to get that guide, download it, have it on your device. It's optimised for mobile browsing so you can see it and that gives you all the information you need and covers every aspect that we're going to look at in this video. We have a YouTube channel, so that's uh, really good there for looking at just some simple things like logging in, attaching your phone to the valve key, starting an operation, you know, finding valves, all those key things that we're going to look at today, they're all in there. And the training video that I'm doing now will go into the YouTube channel as well. Um, so if you think there's something not quite right with Smart Valve, you can submit a support request. So clicking on this button here will open an email to us. So support at Smart Valve. So it tells us some information about you um, and what you're doing. So, you know, which version of your iPhone you've got, uh, what your version number is, your operating system, your version history, etc. And then you can type uh, anything into here to say, you know, I don't think this is particularly working. Send that over to us and we'll have a look at it straight away. And then here, a couple of other things. So if you're having what we call sync related issues. So remember I talked about Smart Valve being an always on system. So there's always synchronization going on between the app and the cloud database. So if you think that something's not quite right, 
and you have any pending synchronizations, you can click here and it'll say if you've got any files that are waiting to go up or be pulled down or any valves that are waiting to go up or be pulled down, that will be in um, that section there. Um, and also, as we said before, if you are having issues and you don't think the, the phone's working as it should do, it's probably going to be related to synchronization. Synchronization is really quite complex. So what we might do is ask you to look at that, take a screenshot of it, and then email that to support, see if there's anything kind of stuck in the pipeline, if you like, which we can help you with. And then finally, if there's something that you think, oh, it'd be really good if Smart Valve could do this, you can submit a feature request. Again, hit the Submit Feedback button. Tell us what you'd like Smart Valve to do, and we'll have a look at it from there. Okay, so that's the main navigations there on the left-hand side. So I'm just going to go back to the home page now. So the key thing is obviously we want to find a valve. There are a couple of ways that you can do this. So I can't show you this one in the training video, but it's a really good feature of Smart Valve. If you're going to operate a valve and you know where that valve is, you can drive out go to the area where the valve is, you know, walk to the valve or park your van next to the valve. And once you're there, if you just put the cursor into the search and then press search, what that will do, Smart Valve will say, right, I know where this user is. I know there are valves around here. I'm going to do a proximity search. And if you're stood on top of the valve that you want to operate, once the search is finished, it will pull back the hundred or so valves that are in your closest proximity. So if you're literally stood on top of the valve cover for the one you want to operate, then that valve should be at the top of the list. And then the one next to it will be next, next to it, next, so on, so on, working down to a proximity of, you know, a few hundred metres around your current point. And that works where anywhere you go within your patch. So you can always do that. And it's how a lot of the users in the UK do their searches. The other way to do it is type in a valve number. So... We know all your valve numbers, um, we have them in our database. So if I type in a valve number here, so 1001000 and press search, that will pull back that valve. Now that's really it, it's simple, it's easy. You type in the full valve number, it will pull that valve back. It does do partial searches, so you could just type in 100 for example, or 100 then a 1 after it but it will pull like all the valves that have that combination of numbers in there so you won't find the one that you want so now in the search results it's found that valve it tells me a bit of information about that valve so the valve number the type of valve the size of valve its current operational status which is set as open and its current distance away from my location so you know it was ten and a half thousand miles or so inside in the uk doing my training so once you've found that valve we simply click on it it gives you a number of options. So what do we want to do? So a few things we can do. So we can get directions to this particular valve. So if you don't know where it is, you're searching for it and you're not there and you want to know, you press get directions. That will link into any of your um, kind of GPS tools on your iPhone or your Android phone. And it will use those and give you diving directions to that uh, particular valve. We can add it to what we call the grouped op planner. I will come back to that at the end. So Smart Valve has the ability to do single valve operations, but you can also set up multiple valve operations for yourself on the on the device as well. And I'll show you how to do that. But what we want to do is view the valve. So I'm going to click on view the valve. And this, this is going to give me all the detail for this particular valve. So a couple of things you saw there and a couple of things to be aware of. So this is using obviously the mobile phone network and it's pulling live data down. So nothing is really stored on the phone. I say nothing, it's not quite correct. So we do have a data cache on the phone, but that cache for security reasons is cleared fairly regularly. So we wouldn't want your data to be lying on a phone, although it's password protected, although I'm sure you have your phones protected with screen locks, etc. You know, we don't want your data lying around clearly accessible if you lose your phone. So the cache is cleared all of the time. Um, so smart valve, and because things are changing on the network all of the time, you know, the status of valves, etc., is changing all the time, information is changing. We're always asking for that latest version to be pulled down. 
So I don't know if you saw there, there's a little message that said DMA data is being downloaded. It will appear here when done. So I can now tell you the DMA data has been pulled down because I can see on the map now, I can see the valve and I can see the grayed area, which is the DMA location boundary. And I can see all the blue mains running underneath the streets as well. They probably thinking, well, hang on a second, there's gonna be more than one valve there. Absolutely. So that's just a snapshot of that valve that we're searching for. So the one that ends in one zero zero zero. Um, and if we want to then go and have a look at the detail of that DMA, we simply click on the screen and now that pulls up the whole DMA map for us as well. So here now we can either use the controls down at the bottom so we can make this bigger or smaller by using the controls or we can pinch and scroll and zoom as we would with any smartphone. So now you can see the level of detail that we go down to. So we can see all of the valves, we can see all the hydrants, we can see the pipe network and we can see the boundary of the DMA. So one thing you'll notice here as well, look, this DMA is you know, quite big, we've got a gap there in the middle, but it's not showing me all the valves. So on the top here, next to the distance away from my location, we have some arrows. So if we hit those arrows left and right, that will scroll through all of the valves on the DMA. Now we have that scroll function again to help with loading times and speeds. So some of the DMAs we have for clients, you know, may have 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 valves in. So obviously to download that data quickly to the device, we do it in chunks and then we make those chunks available. So if you're looking at a DMA and thinking, well, hang on a second, I'm missing some, you know, valves down here. Look for these arrows and scroll through and then we can see all the valves on that DMA. Okay. So the great thing from this DMA map is if we're actually on the valve that we want to, we want to see data about another valve, we can simply click on it and we can go and view that as well. So this is a hydrant, it's currently closed, fantastic. We'd expect the hydrant to be closed. Again, we can go and have a look at that valve or again, we could add it to this group top planner. So the beauty of doing this with the group top planner, so if I'm thinking I will actually need to go and isolate a piece of main to do some repair and maintenance work, for example. Let me just find one that's uh, pretty good. Well, let's use this example here. So we have these two valves and we have a hydrant here as well. So what we might need to do is go and operate this valve. So you might want to say, well, yeah, I need to close that valve down so I could add that to my planner. And we'll come back and I'll show you this later. Um, and then you might need to go and close that valve down so I could press on that valve and add that to my planner. And then I need to go and operate that hydrant so I can add that to my group top planner. So you can quickly build up a job and you can then have a look at that job. You can um, edit that job. You can move things around and actually then save that job and it'll come through to your device for you to carry it out. So you can do all that from the DMA map. Um, and you can find out quite a lot from there. Now, if I was located here, I would appear again as a blue dot. So if I stood down here next to these valves, I would be a blue dot on this map. So if you're actually looking for valves and looking for something that you might need to do, so if you know, so customers complained about you know a leak or a burst down this point, you can walk down here, down Norman Street, you'd appear as a blue dot. You can walk to these valves in these hydrant locations. You can do valve checks. You can make sure that they're operable, you know, all the things that you need to do by having this device in your hand and give you some information about the DMA. Now the DMA kind of map and all these functions are bits that we're really, you know, developing within Smart Valve here in the UK for some of our clients. We're adding much more data into here. So we're adding leak and burst data. We're adding water quality issue data in here. We're adding pressure data. We're adding transient information in here as well. So it gives this much more detailed picture about the DMA. So, you know, Smart Valve is all about making sure we do manual valve ops correctly. So one, we know that they're done. We know they're done in the right order and we know the valve's put back to its status after we've operated it. So we carry on delivering, you know, the right service to our clients, i.e. their own water. But also it's about making sure when you turn that valve that you're avoiding adding any unwanted pressure to the network, causing transient pressure, and we turn the valve in a calm network's way. So that's what Smart Valve does and records out there as you're turning the valve. So in adding more data in there, you know, we can then improve the way that those valves should be turned. So we have a Calm Networks valve turn profile that we can set for all valves. Here in the UK, it's roughly an 80-20 rule. So 20% of the turn, which is the critical part of the turn, will be done, you know, at a relatively slow rate. And then the other 80%, you know, a bit quicker. 
Uh, so if you're closing the valve, the last 20% will be really slow. If you're opening the valve, the first 20% will be really slow. That is the way to avoid you know, the transient pressure spike, the water hammer in the network. But we know that every DMA isn't the same. So we may have this blanket offering there, but we know that you know, this DMA may be really old. The pipes, you know, we may have issues in terms of maintenance or they may need replacement or there might be high pressure demand within this part of the network. It might be susceptible to leaks and bursts or water discoloration. So therefore we can add data into here to say, well, actually, when you go and turn this valve, it's not going to be 80-20. It's going to be, you know, a 70-30. We're going to imp we're going to really slow down for those last valve turns. We're going to make the percentages higher because we know that if we turn it on a normal valve turn profile that should be calm networks, we still pick up transient pressure, you know, on our pressure loggers, for example. So that's going to improve the way that every single valve op is done and ultimately we can have a dynamic valve turn for every single valve on the network should we want one based on the data that we record. And smart valves are now going to have the capability to use that information you know, and using algorithms and using some intelligence in the background actually rewrite those valve turn profiles automatically based on data that it's got. So the DMA map, really important part of smart valve. So I click back there to just go back to the main valve detail. So at the top here, you can see a warning triangle. Now this warning triangle is a navigable point. If that warning triangle is not there, it will be three dots. And if we click on the warning triangle, it will open up a new part of um, you know, the editable navigation here. So the warning triangle is saying to us, well, there's some data, some critical data here that's missing for this particular valve. Now, what we class as critical data when we start a smart valve trial will be it hasn't got any photographs of the valve, so that would be a critical piece of information. Or it could be something more critical, like we haven't got the valve size, we haven't got the orientation to close. So if we don't have those two pieces of information, then we can't dynamically set a valve turn profile. So if we don't know the size, we don't know the orientation to close, we can't do it. But we can see what they are by clicking the valve issues. So here we're saying it's got no images, okay, which we thought is correct. So this will be the same for every single valve before we start the trial. So every single one will have a warning triangle because we say we'd like to have some photos, therefore it's critical as part of this trial. So we can close that down. But if we go in here and have a look, we can then have a look at the details for this particular valve. We can just go and view them, but instead of viewing them, let's go in because we might want to actually edit those valve details. So here you can see the details we have for this particular valve. So you're not going to want to edit the valve number, um, but you might want to operate, change the status. If the GIS system is saying, well, this current status is open and you get there and it's not, you can change it here. So you could change it to either throttled or closed just by clicking on it. Um, here, the valve type, we can change the whole, whole list of different types of valve in here. So, you know, we can change these. We can change the orientation to close if it's wrong, so currently anti-clockwise. Again, these details are off your GIS system, so we hope that they're correct, but we know from experience in the UK that not all the GIS data is correct. So, for example, Seven Trent Water, during their trial, before they purchased Smart Valve, went in and they changed about 9,000 pieces of information within six weeks based on their valves. And that was things like valve types, valve sizes, and the location of the valve as well. So once we're happy, we can then click over on the top here. We don't have to save anything. It will remember it and you can save it just by clicking the tick at the end. There's some more data here. So if we want to include more data about this valve, lots of information. So is the valve faulty? You know, what's the operational status of the valve? Is it in use? Is it proposed? Is it open, closed, etc.? Um, we can record pressures, we can record turbidity readings, we can put in any general comments that we want as well. This is a really useful one in terms of the location. So if we feel the location of this valve is wrong, there are a couple of the ways that we can fix it. So the first way of fixing it is if you're thinking, right, well, I've come to this valve, it says it's on this side of the street and it's actually on the other side. You can go and stand on where the valve should be located, press that green button, and it will locate to your position. Now, it will locate it as accurately as the GPS is on the device. So that's going to be, you know, good to two metres, maybe a little bit more accurate if you're lucky. But that will then reset that valve to the location that it should be at. The other way we could do it, we can click on this map here. And again, we get the DMA view. And if we tap and hold on the screen, 
we then can drag and drop this valve anywhere we like. So obviously if you dragged and dropped it on the mains, that's absolutely fine, because it's still on the mains, but obviously if you've moved it over here to this other side of the street, then there's an issue there because all the pipes would need to change as well. But I'm not going to change that for the time being. I'm just going to close that down and leave it in the same position. So any locations you can change. All of this is flagged in the database, so we know if a valve location has been changed and they can be updated later on by your GIS team. <clears throat> now, ideally, as again we're doing in the UK, this information is updated automatically now. So if any of this valve data is edited, um, so the status, once the valve's been operated, so it goes from open to close, for example, the location's changed, the type of valve's changed, that information's integrated seamlessly into people's GIS systems. So those integrations are already in place and are taking place for our clients here in the UK. So we can change the DMA. We can give it any location description. So we're saying, yeah, this valve's located under a bush, just to the left-hand side of the start of Norman Road. You can say, yeah, are there any access issues as well? Again, really important information for people that may come and look at this valve in the future. And finally, we have the images. So there are no images for this valve, so I'm going to take one really quickly. So a couple of ways you can do it. So we can add a new photo here, so we can pick one from our current camera roll. So you could take photos, add them to your camera roll and add them from there, or you can take a photo directly. So I'm just going to take one of my carpet. So I take the photo and say, yep, yeah, okay, that's a representative photo of the valve. So I take that and you can see the image comes in. Now, once you've done that, if you click on that image, it opens up some more tools. Here on the top right, we've got the delete function and next to it, we've got what we call an annotation function. So if we press on that annotation function, it now gives us some drawing tools. So if I'd taken a picture of the valve, so here's the valve cover, for example, and say, for example, there's another valve cover here. So I've taken that picture, imagine they're the two valve covers, and you want to identify which one is the valve because they're really close to each other and the GPS, you know, if it's two meters, is not going to detect which one you should be looking at. You could draw an arrow and then in your notes say, you know, the valve is the one closest to the curb edge when you're facing north up the road. And you could put north on there. So again, add more information for the next person that's going to come along to make sure they're going to operate the correct valve. Press the tick save those annotations and then you can see they're there ready to go now we've changed and added this data so what i'm going to do now is press the tick at the top just press it once and wait you'll see now the warning triangle's gone because i've taken the pictures and now we've got the main navigation point there again as well so they're the tools this navigation at the top edit valve do the changes that you need to make across the data set and then you can improve the quality of the information we've got for subsequent users. Now for the trial period there's no integration with GIS so we're collecting all this data so it'll be right in SmartValve but it may will be incorrect in your GIS system if you edit data but obviously we'll look at the end of the trial to provide that data back and, and give that back to the guys at Southeast so they can update their GIS system in due course. So that's Finding a valve, using search, looking at the DMA map, and then looking at the valve details and being edit to be able to edit it. So then really the final couple of things are now, well actually, we want to operate this valve. So you can see from this screen now, I've got a little blue bar down the bottom. If I scroll up from there, that opens up some more page elements here. So I've not got any jobs on this particular valve. So the ones in the blue are what we call a single operation. So that's an operation just for yourself to carry out. And then we have the grouped operations, which would be in the green as well. So the images at the moment, although I save some images until I refresh this valve and go back to the home page, those images won't appear because I've saved them in the valve, but they haven't got up to the server and they haven't been pulled back down again. So they will appear once I've done all my editing. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just add a really simple operation and it's really quick and it's really easy. So we can see the valves open from the green status at the top. So we're going to close this valve down. So here we're going to say, right, I've got an open, I've got a close, I've got a tag and I've got a visit. So the tag is what we talked about before with the NFC chips. We're not going to really look at that. And a visit valve is pretty much like the same. So you're going to go, you're going to have a look at the valve, you're going to edit some of the information, you're going to tag the valve, and then you're probably not going to operate it. So we use these for things like valve checking, but again, 
for the start of this trial. We're not really going to look at that. <clears throat> so we're going to do a close valve. So I just click close valve operation. And there it is. It appears as a turn to close. If I've made a mistake for some reason, click on those three little dots. I can delete that. And it'll delete it. Okay, really easy. So you're in control of all of these. So you can set up as many jobs as you like. So you can set up the close. And then I can set up the open to return it to its normal state as well. So once I've done that, click on the turn to close. So it's going to warn me now that I'm nowhere near this valve. So do you really want to start this operation? So I'm going to say yes. So now it's going to talk me through the process. So this obviously is on your mobile phone. So you have to have a way of attaching your mobile device to the valve key. So the first step is to do that. Now we use a quad locking system, which we've shared with the guys at Southeast Water. You may choose to use something else, but it's a really simple locking system. So you have a bit that attaches to your valve key, just with some little bungee elastic cords or some zip ties. And you can either have that on the shaft of the valve key or on the handle of the valve key. It works in both orientations. So once you've got your phone connected, and we'd suggest that you have it, if you can, on the handle so you can see what you're doing, you can say, OK, I'm ready to go. Now, this event ID, this is something that you use quite a lot in the UK. So if there's something going on, so you've got a major burst and you have to close down loads of valves and tweak the system, etc., or do some repair and maintenance, you might have an event ID that these operations all need to be grouped by. So if we've got an event ID, we can type it in there. And that will then allow us to quickly group all those operations together and do a report on what valves were operated during that event. But I'm just going to say nothing for the time being. So we can confirm the valve size, so it's 100 millimetres, and the valve orientation to close anti-clockwise, which is correct. But if it wasn't, again, we can change it at this point just by toggling. So initial valve status, again, we could change these if we wanted to just by toggling, but that's absolutely fine. And now we have this calibration step. So this calibration step is opening the sensors in the phone so it gets it ready to do the turn. In reality, this is on your valve key now. We've already opened up a lot of the sensors and this will start to pick up any vibrations. So if the uh, valve is passing water under the gate, for example, and, and vibrating, then we pick some of that up and we record those as a separate file. Okay. So this has got a valve turn profile on it. So it might not be quite correct at the moment, just for demonstration purposes. So this is step one of two. We've got 0.8 turns anti-clockwise at no more than 30 revolutions per minute. So this is a turn to close. So this is the faster part of the turn. Um, so when I start this, it's going to talk me through it. And then we'll start turning the valve as you would on the valve key. Obviously, I'm using my hands um, and it will show you through the process. Beginning three. Two, one, start. So you can hear it then. Three, two, one, start. So if I turn it clockwise. Warning. You seem to be turning this valve in the wrong direction. You see smart valve gives you a warning. If I turn it the right way. You, you are see. coming to the end of this step. Please get ready for a change of speed. So because it's such a short turn, just for demonstration purposes, smart valve has already told me we're getting close towards the end of the step. So you need to be ready to slow down as we go into step two. So now I'm step two of two. So now I need to be no more than five. RPM. This profile step is now completed. So if you still need turn, to operate so the valve further, you can continue. You when you are finished, is, just press finish one step. single turn in two steps. So the first part was 0 0.8 turns, no more than 30. And if I go too fast, it will tell me I'm going too fast. It warns you when you're getting ready to change speed. So it knows that you're getting close to the step two where you have to slow down. So it tells you to slow down. And then it talks you through all the way through to the finish. So now we've done that. I can press finish. Yep, we've completed it. Next. So was this provided valve turn accurate? So we could say yes, it was or no, it wasn't. So if we've got there, for example, and you know this valve was this one was 100 millimeters, so it should be more turns than that. I just set it up to be one turn just for demonstration purposes. But if we got there, the valve size was wrong. Therefore, the turn profile was wrong. We'd mark it as inaccurate. And then we could write anything we like in the comments here about why that was. And all these comments are available. But if you get there and the valve size is wrong, so you're doing more turns, you can carry on turning and Smart Valve will carry on recording. So if the valve should have been, you know, four turns, for example, and you've recorded six turns, then the valve size is probably wrong or there's something wrong with the valve. You can add all those comments in. If the valve size is wrong, go back into the valve, edit it, change the valve size, write in the notes, 
you know, use all that information to you know, inform both the business and the next person that's coming along to turn the valve about what has gone on during that step. And I'm going to mark it as accurate. Press finish. The valve's now gone from open to closed. We confirm it's done. <coughs> Excuse me. So now you can see that the valve has gone to close with the red at the top. And if I click over to my history now, you can see a couple of things that we've done here in terms of this valve. So we've updated the valve and that was done where it says unknown. That's my user account and that will fill in once I've synchronized this back. It will say me um, and obviously say anybody's username who's been doing these before in the history. So we've updated the valve and we've also done the turn to close operation as well. So that's how easy it is to set up a valve turn. You can see how Smart Valve talks you through that process as you do it. So this is guiding you against the best practice and we'll set what they should be for Southeast before you get on you know, the trial using this out in the field and we'll set the valve turn profile for the valves as well. So they'll be ready to go. So every single valve will have this two-step process um, and it will talk you through that process as you go. Okay, so hopefully that's quite clear in terms of how you set up a valve operation and how you undertake it. So the last thing we're going to do is set up one of these grouped operations and show you how to do that. So if I go back to my search results and I click on this valve again, I'm going to go and view the valve. So as you see before, the status is now closed. I'll return this to open at the end of this session once we've done it. But I'm going to click into the DMA map now and I'm going to add some valves to my group top panel. So I'm just going to pick on this area down here. So here we can see some valves and some hydrants in this area. So there's three here, look, for example. So let's have a look at these. So as before, I'm going to click on this valve and I'm going to say, right, okay, I do want to do something with this. I'm going to add it to my group hop planner. Oh. Okay, so we might not have enabled the group hop planner for you guys to start off with. So let me double check in terms of the license key that we've put on there because it's not allowing me to add those at the moment. So... The group top planner, as we said before, it's a function that allows you to do multiple valve operations. So every time we come to a valve, we can click it, it adds it to our planner. But let me double check on that with the guys back in the, uh, back in the office later on. Um, I'll do another video on the group top planner so it can show you how they work. Um, it'll make it easier rather than trying to, uh, trying to do this video again. So we'll come back to that. So let's keep it really simple for this one. So single valve operations using the um, valve tool, as we've seen before, editing the valve, as we've seen before. So they're the major features. Like I said, group top planner, I'll make that available to you. We'll add that in so you can trial that during the trial process as well. Um, and I'll do a separate video on that and I'll add it onto the YouTube channel for later. So. That's a quick run through. Obviously, I said it's taken a bit longer than that, nearly 40 minutes to go through that. So hopefully that's given you some insight and will get you started with Smart Valve. So we will talk to the guys at Southeast now. We'll get those valve turn profiles set correctly for you. I'll update the license key so we get to the group top planner and then I'll do a group top planner uh, video for you so you can see how that works. Um, but it's fairly similar to as I've just demonstrated. It just means that you can set up multiple valve shuts or opens all in one go. Okay, so we're going to open up for a question and answer session, hopefully sometime next week. So once you guys have looked at this video and get started on the trial, then I'm sure you're going to have lots of questions. So we'll be there and we'll do a online session where we can go through any elements of the app before you get started and answer any questions you may have. Okay, thanks very much, everybody. Take care.